Hello, my name is Lavina Ramchandani, and I'm a community lead for all things software testing. So what are we doing here today? Well, I'm going to take you over a nice little demo of this really, really interesting tool that will be very helpful for all your testing teams, and it's called ZipRunner. So without further ado, let's get started. ZipRunner testing platform is an all-in-one tool for various QA needs, starting with creating and executing manual test cases and performing analysis of automated executions and viewing reports. So let's begin with test case, test case management. As you can see, my projects are nicely aligned over here. I can simply enter and show you some details. So before we get started, I just wanted to let you know that you can also import your test cases as a generic CSV test rail or exported CSV from test rail. So the features here for the test case management, you can see that uh, it's a tree-like structure. So basic functionality, navigations and interactions, and they start opening side by side, which is really useful. I can also drag and drop. So if I would like to verify that a new user can register successfully at the top, all I need to do is click more, move here and it's changed its position. I can also do quick uh, creations of test cases below any uh, area that I'm interested in. So whether it's basic functionality, navigation or interaction. Moreover, it's convenient to work with separate test cases. So let's open any test case. So uh, for instance, the first one, I can see some general details over here, including description, preconditions, and steps to reproduce them. I can also get into detail with the properties. So I know for a fact that this is a high priority test case and it's not going to be automated. No attachments, execution details. It has been run on prod already as part of regression and any change log details that I might be interested in. I wanted to show you another thing that was really, really interesting, which is switch to sidebar view. And you can actually manage your test cases nice and easily if you were keen to see your test cases on the left and the details on the right. So that's a nice uh, modal view to have. And it's obviously it depends on you how you prefer to um, how you prefer to see your test cases. So it's nice and adaptive. You can switch between tabs, of course, as you can see nice and easily. It's pretty seamless. And you can also edit fields as you go. So you can see this little pencil you can go editing as you like. So all our test cases, as you can see, are in place. So let's try and execute them now. So as we saw in one of the test cases, it has already been run. So let's see where this has been run. So I've created uh, a test environment already, which is production. And I am going to show you that. So basic functionality regression. It's in production, browser, Chrome, and operating system, Mac. So let's open this and you can see um, the rates of passed, failed, skipped, and untested nice and clearly. You can see that only 82% of these were complete, nine out of 11 tests tested, and the details that may be important to you or KPIs that may be important to you. So I just wanted to show you uh, one of the tests here. As you can see, it's linked to GitHub. So I could literally see that it's ha it has been failed. And I could literally go into GitHub and check where and what has been failed specifically. So that's a really nice functionality to have. And you can even uh, check on your model here or switch it back to the normal way of uh, seeing uh, on a little uh pop up and you can go from there as well. So I would like to go on an untested test for you over here. And I would like to now maybe uh, convert this to past, which is verified that users can view and navigate the FAQ section successfully. 
So I'm going to save and close this test. And you can see nicely this test has been passed because of course I can navigate to the FAQ page successfully. We are done now with all things test case management. And now I would like you to look at the automation reporting. So let's go to the launches. We are now on the launches page, which contains all the executions that are reported to Zebraner. I can filter them with any filters, for example, by status, by browsers, or by platforms, or add a specific filter that's comfortable to me and my project. So let's try and go inside one of the launches. I'll try and go for minimal acceptance. And again, over here, you can see really interesting KPIs and a, a graph as well. You can see the details of when the launcher was run, what browser, what platform, and what build this was as well. So this is really important information that could be handy to anyone in your teams. So I've already started inspecting it by checking the logs. So I would like to now go into this and you can see that the logs are there and even if I re return back you can see all the details all the logs so you can specifically open the first one and the really really interesting feature here is that it also supports display of video session logs to view and download which is always handy for your team so I will just play this little video so it will show you what is happening so we're going to the Zibrana website and we are running some tests there. So it didn't find, it could, It was unable to locate an element and it's showing you where exactly. I can also inspect logs and screenshots in this area. So it's really interesting that you have um, this feature you have some screenshots as well. And uh, history of any previous executions which can help detecting flaky tests. So of course, we don't like flaky tests and we want to avoid those. So it's a nice feature to have a video and screenshot are captured in one place. Let's go back. And I would like to show you something that's really interesting from the AI and ML side of things because for classification of failure reasons. So there's labels on here, which you can see. Um, if I go back to the minimal, you can see some locator issues. So assign failure tag. So you can see I've already interacted with it in my previous tests. And now I see the level of accuracy uh, that it has increased and the system automatically detects the reason of failure with these three categories over here. So this is really interesting and it's giving you again some more KPIs if you would like to use those. Moreover, we can see the same label for GitHub and we can also link the issues of the fail tests. So there are some cool features for reviewing and sharing results, and you can check them all in the trial version of Zebrunner offer, which is on their website. So when the analysis part is done, I'm sure you're all interested in reporting or dashboards. So let's have a look at that because these will always come handy to your, um, to your stakeholders. So let's get into failures and flakiness. So this would be obviously very important to your specific teams to understand where failures are happening and what is flaky to start basically working on those rather than creating a technical debt backlog. So you've got all the details, the defects, reports, uh, since when they've been happen happening and re uh, when they were reproduced as well. You've got the stability uh, table here as well. So how stable has it been since? And you've got all the test details over here, which is really important to have for a test 
team or an engineering team itself. So let's look at another dashboard, uh, which would be monthly pass rate, which could be for your other types of stakeholders like uh, higher management or um, cross-functional teams. And you can showcase um, these like a general pass rate every month. You've got a high pass rate, uh, a low known issue uh, rate or zero percent literally. And then you've got other details that could be handy for other stakeholders. You've got also pass rate per browser. So one is monthly and one is as per browser. So we can see that it's passed uh, in some browsers, but it has failed in other browsers like um, Chrome, Edge and Firefox. So this is really important details that could be handy to your stakeholders and not just details. These are important KPIs that can be reported upon. So I hope you have now enjoyed this mini demo of ZipRunner, and I hope you will be using ZipRunner soon. Feel free to check for their free trial, which involves a lot of interesting features, as mentioned, and let us know your thoughts. Thank you very, very much. I hope you enjoyed this demo and look forward to hearing your feedback. Thank you.